And you are listening to the Ask the Experts radio show on Talk Radio 1190. I'm John Wolf. Our phone number 214-787-1190. We've got experts in both plumbing and foundation work this week. Our usual guest, Roger Wakefield of TexasGreenPlumbing.com and uh, Roger Williamson with him today of WilliamsonFoundation.com. And uh, is, this is our final segment. So if there's something you were thinking about, should I ask? Hey, it's free. <laughs> Give them a call, 214-787-1190, and speak to both of them right now. Uh, diving in with uh, the question about how do you find out where the leak is if it's not obvious, if it's not on your side of the wall? If it's-, it, it's, it's normally not obvious. The, the problem is with leaks under the slab, sewer leaks are the worst because it, it's a long, drawn-out process. You literally have to stick test balls and long hoses throughout the entire sewer system. And you've normally only got two holes right there in the front of the house where the two-way cleanouts are. And you take test balls and long hoses, you push them up the line, you what's called flip them, you get them to turn up sideways and go into a side branch. I've got guys that are amazing at this. And I've gone out with them and, and I'll work with it for 30 minutes or 45 minutes trying to flip a test ball and He'll say, look, let, let, let me show you one more time. And you know, he'll, he'll run the camera down behind it and push it up and, and gets it to flip right up in there. And it's funny because you literally you have to get a test ball lodged in. Then you take another test ball and you use that hose and the camera behind it pushing it. And I mean, you can make them turn and go crazy. But what you do is you isolate different areas until you know that you've isolated you know, one area or several areas and say, okay, this is where the leak is or this, these, this is where they are. The problem is sometimes you get into areas that there's literally no way to get a test ball to that area. And we've had some where we've gone in, we've replaced the main going straight through the house, isolated the branch lines coming in it, and then came in and filled those up. Luckily, we had a lady that had another plumber come out, and it's going to be $27,000. And they said, look, but we can't test all these branch lines. We're going to assume they're bad. And I talked to her. I said, look, let me replace the main. Then we can literally – cap and test off the branch lines from inside and none of those had to be replaced so she ended up paying 13,000 instead of 27 and just put it on her health insurance well i don't know that it went that way but water lines are a little bit different uh like we were talking earlier about the valve in the yard if we know that there's a leak in there if there's a valve in the yard that we can shut off and the water stops leaking then we know the leak is out in the yard if there's no valve there it's kind of hard to tell people. We don't know if there's a slab leak or we don't know if it's a yard service leak. We just know that somewhere between the meter and your water system, there is a leak. So that, that's an issue we have to deal with. Okay, and I should mention Roger Wakefield's very uh, demonstrative with his hand gestures. And even though it's radio, he's got plenty of videos online on, uh, on his website, texasgreenplumbing.com, and on Facebook and all sorts of instructional things he said and told us in previous shows that sometimes other plumbers get a little miffed. Why are you giving away our secrets? <laughs> We've got a big presence on YouTube. YouTube has been really, really good for us. I'll tell everybody listening, if you would, you know, go out there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are right now working on videos where literally we teach people how to rebuild toilets, how to fix their water heaters, different things. There, there's so many things that people can do themselves. And YouTube is a great way to go ask the question, how do I rebuild my toilet? How do I change my flapper? How do I change my flush valve or my fill valve or my ball cock? There's so many different things that you can ask and literally get a, a tutorial video and just, I mean, you can sit there and watch step by step, hit pause, do that. And I mean, you can save yourself several hundreds of dollars. Okay. Now, switching gears to the uh, Roger Williamson side of things, I know that I get very religious whenever I hear some plumbing, uh, some foundation commercial about all the different types of foundation work that are done. Yes. What, how do you decide how, what, what you're going to do if someone does have a foundation problem? Well, um, we are a company that actually is not married to one specific type of foundation repair. We do just about everything on the market. Um, there's actually not as many different types of peers on the market as it seems because there's a lot of marketing that goes on mm -hmm. uh, where companies try to make it sound like they've got something really exclusive that no one else has. 
and that's rarely actually the case. Um, we actually look at it on a case-by-case basis, uh, depending on the structure itself, the location of the structure, both in the metroplex, like uh, for instance, if it's a, uh, a waterfront property in Rockwall versus a, um, a, a property in East Plano, um, there's different types of situations with those soils and with the moisture in those soils and the movement of those soils. So uh, one pier might be a better alternative than the other in, in each of those different situations. So we look at them situationally. We do install concrete pilings, steel piers, drilled piers, helical steel piers, uh, all of those. We also oftentimes, you were talking about your patio, uh, we, we are one of the few companies that actually has our own uh, foamed polyurethane equipment. And foam polyurethane is where we actually drill a hole through the concrete of, of patios, driveways, sometimes the interior center sections of houses. Uh, the holes are about the size of your index finger. And uh, we pump a heated mixture of polyurethane liquid and a foaming agent. It actually expands and lifts the concrete back into position and holds it there. And that material is actually Department of Transportation approved to be used on highways and international uh, airport runways. Is there anything that looks nice that you could use just to fill a crack that doesn't look like, oh, just put some black tar in here in the middle of your driveway? I it, it seems like that should have been available. It, it seems like it, but everything I've ever found that you can use to fill a concrete crack, it it, it still looks like a crack that's been filled. Yeah. I've, I've never found anything. Now, mortar, you can get a, a brick mason out, and they can do a really nice job of color matching the mortar. Mm-hmm. Uh, matching the color is one thing. Matching the weathering is, is, is where it really gets difficult. But a good mason can pretty well make those go away. But on concrete... Nothing that I'm aware of. And you assume they're gonna, it's going to stretch and, and it's contract get, anyway right, over time. Right. So what happens if you have a mason come out and it rains a lot and things start going back together? Does that create other issues? It, it, it can. If cracks are filled with the foundation in a, in a down position um, and then we get into a really wet year and things start to swell, it can actually push those things back together. And, and it, it will often – with mortar, it's pretty easy. It will make it start crumbling out where it was. Uh, caulk will start to bulge. Uh, where you run into the bigger issues are sheetrock, where they fixed sheetrock inside the house, and all of a sudden those sheetrock repairs are trying to compress together, and it'll kind of bulge out the repair material, but it can't necessarily go all the way back together. So oftentimes it will create another crack a little farther down the wall in the sheetrock, and you often get a two-for-one uh, when you fix the uh, sheetrock before the foundation is really addressed. Now, Roger Wakefield has told us how he went from one of the most unstable fields, the restaurant business, <laughs> into one of the most in-demand and necessary fields, plumbing. How uh, we don't have a lot of time left, but how sure. did you how did you get into your obviously your passion here of foundation work? In in I, I was actually at Baylor to be an attorney. And uh, I was uh, looking for a summer job, went to work for a foundation repair company, and uh, just found that I had a knack for it. Being young and naive and full of, uh, of optimism and confidence, I decided I can fix foundations in the summers the way other people mow lawns in the summers. And so I started a foundation repair company while I was in college in 1985 and uh, just never looked back. There you are. 40, 30 years later, 30, 33, 33 years, years later. 33 years. So no stability in that field either. No, none Actually, whatsoever. Stability is what it's all about when it comes to the foundation. <laughs> exactly. What, is there a most expensive versus a, oh, you're lucky type of foundation repair in the time we have left here? Well, um, it, it really depends more on the area. A, a lot of people think that a large crack means a really expensive repair, but the cost of repair has to do with the area of the house that's moved, not how much it's moved. So if a corner has dropped eight inches, it still may only take five piers to, to correct it versus an entire back of a house might have only dropped one inch, but it's going to take 15 piers to, to correct that area. Okay. And we're winding down here. Roger Wakefield. Anything you'd like to tell people about what's coming up with, uh, with your business or, or your websites or anything else? We're talking to American Standard again. They're wanting to renew a contract with me for the expert plumber, and I, I love that. We, we're doing a lot of video work. I, I know Roger Williamson is too. We're doing a lot of video work. YouTube is a great place to learn, and we have found out that if we put information out on YouTube – how to do things. These are things that people can, whether they, whether they do end up doing it themselves or not, 
they can at least get on there, watch it, and learn, and either decide, look, I can do that, or that is something that I may not want to take on. And, and if so, you know, hopefully they'll call us, or at least they're more educated and they can talk to their plumber or the right. one they want to deal with. And hopefully end up with you as their plumber. Sounds there wonderful. He's a great one. <laughs> And we have been uh, speaking with Roger Wakefield of TexasGreenPlumbing.com and Roger Williamson of WilliamsonFoundation.com. Real quickly, their numbers again. Roger Wakefield, 972-442-4101. And Roger Williamson, 469-698-8332. I'm John Wolf with you on the Ask the Experts radio show on Talk Radio 1190. Wind was blowing, time stood still.